um, just a uh, update for the CW Jam. Um, where am I up to? Well, in a minute you're going to find out. Um, first of all, after a couple of questions, um, I'd just like to point out that this is a non Bedini setup. Um, basically, we're not concerned with using the back EMF to charge a secondary battery. Um, this is literally just a pulse motor. So we're using the pulse method to rotate a rotor. Um, the idea being that we can then shove on um, um, various methods of generating power. Um, now this is quite different to what I've seen most people do in that um, well for a start with the drive technology is unlike anything else that's been done um, on top of that the generator system is very similar to um, well, well I wouldn't say similar it's, it's almost exactly the same as the way Vespa's doing his um, now this build does include things that I don't believe I have ever seen posted in that not only does the AMPCS, uh, that's the um, Advanced Pulse Motor Control System, or should I say the Advanced Motor Pulse Control System, uh, not only uses the drive coils in both drive and generator mode, um, not only does it automatically reconfigure the coils um, as to where they pulse, um, but also <laughs> the geometry of the coils themselves. And most people think of the coil geometry being its physical size, number of turns, type of wire used, etc. There's also another geometry in that you have the distance from the rotor, from the magnets on the rotor, and you also have the angle of incidence. Now, the angle of incidence um, is basically... Um, when, the ma when a magnet is pointing directly at the core of the coil, is the core of the coil pointing directly at the magnet? That's what the angle of incidence is. So by altering it one way or another, depending on the rotation of the rotor, um, does that change the amount of force that you get and therefore the RPM? So that's what we're going for. We're not going for efficiency as such we're going for RPM so the setup that I'm doing allows you to adjust these things um, have tested the theory out before and got some interesting results we now need to do it in a slightly more precise way um, the end result being that I hope to be able to program the AMPCS, the Advanced Motor Pulse Control System, so that it will do it itself. So that it will adjust the coils automatically for you. Um, this obviously is one hell of an advantage. Um, as I said, I don't think I've seen anyone ever p to do it. Most people that build pulse type motors um, basically follow, in some respects, the Bedini book, you know, the Bedini handbook on how to do it. Um, a lot of people, well, those that can, I should say, um, use aluminium rotors. Um, some people use wood, some people use um, 
and bike rims, etc., etc. Um, so this is completely outside that. Um, <laughs> as I said, I don't think I've seen anything even like it. Um, I mean, some setups. Um, one that comes to mind is M. Allen's. Um, his huge monster of a thing is uh, quite impressive. Um, not quite sure if he's done an update to that. But, there we go. Um, so, I'm going to show you where I'm up to at the moment. Um, first thing, while well, I think about it, just to... I'm not posting results, so you can't challenge me. Yeah. Right, let's take a look. Simply enough, it's all square at the moment. Not too exciting, is it? Except you do notice things stuck out at the sides. Now, at the moment, it's dry assembled. And I've just got uh, um, three bolts in there to show you just so I can set the alignment now these as you can see they do move and that one and of course the one on this side as well quite uh, a lot of movement Although I've got uh, a little bit of fouling between those two. Which I'll show you now. Hopefully I can do this without an issue. There we go. As you can see, three coils in a star. As you can see, they rotate quite nicely. And they're on sliders so they can be moved in. And out. So if I had it pretty much about like that. Now where the coil is there should be pretty much bang on the edge of the rotor. So obviously and pull it out. Got some markings, simple little sliders. So and the rotor obviously sits in the middle. All of them are independent. I can have them all at different positions wherever I want. Simples. So, how am I going to move them in and out? Well, that's actually quite uh, simple as well. Uh, jack screws. Jack screws? Yeah. Basically, nylon bolt nylon nut, turn the nylon bolt, the nut moves. A presto. So, at the back here, we have a, a stay coming up vertically for the uh, um, nylon bolt to go through. And in the back of the carriage there will be the nylon nut. Super glued in, hot melt glued in. And you just wind the nut to pull the carriage back when it's not sticking. Needs a bit of use to uh, get it to uh, behave. Set it up to be uh, a touch on the tight side so that the uh, the coils don't vibrate in the uh, in the carriages. Red, white and blue as I discussed before uh, just to identify the coils makes it a bit easier than writing a number on. But obviously when this is all assembled writing a number on is going to be a bit uh, um, well, a bit awkward. So, haven't got a core in these coils yet. Um, waiting for a shipment to arrive. Touch wood, literally. Yeah, hopefully, it'll be here next week. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm up to. It's not really much to look at. Gives you an idea of its operation. And uh, hopefully. It'll be nice and sweet. Anyway, any questions as always, give us a shout. We're on tape.
Um, for those that are skipping around, I'll say again, this is not a Bedini setup. Um, as far as I can see so far, this is quite outside the normal for um, most pulse motors. Um, we're testing the uh, the coil geometry technology, make sure it works. Um, so this is just a setup. And worst case scenario is I just lock them as you would normally. Do, 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 something like that. And just keep them there and jobs are good and it'll still run. But hopefully touch wood. The uh, moving the coils will uh, give us a bit more uh, RPM. Um, I know the rotor that I'm using is an older one. Um, it has been up to about three and a half thousand RPM with no issues. So um, ideally, I'm looking for constant operation. I will say, looking for operation around about three to three and a half thousand. RPM stable. Um, obviously, in pre initial testing, the RPM limiter will be set to probably something reasonable like somewhere between 500 and 1000 RPM. Just while we uh, just while I check everything out, make sure everything's going to behave itself, etc. etc. So, as always, um, resident on Teep Forum and Feel free to give us a holler. Talk oh to you. Almost forgot. Um, should point out that this is not a pulse motor build off entry for um, RWG. Okay, cheers.